I'm perceived as a different type of teacher because I teach yoga differently. The average person believes that yoga is a series of postures and you have to go to a class in order to do it. And even yoga teachers don't really teach yoga. Yoga teachers see their job often as a someone who gives instruction and now find your warrior too and now find your downward facing dog rather than um, the real yoga which is traditional yoga it yoga is all in the mind yoga is the observation of the self uh, with your breath work uh, mindfulness and pretty much anything you do which all that means is living in the present moment um, and then of course the body which are the asanas or the postures that people do today the way that I teach because modern people have lost so much range of motion and we sit so much and we have so many tight places in our body just because of lack of movement We've lost certain ranges of motion. So my intention, my goal with my students is to reaccess these ranges of motion, which provides relief to normal everyday aches and pains. The system that I develop, uh, it starts from the spine and moves its way out. In the core of our body, we don't do basic movements anymore. We, we, we sit and we slouch and we watch television and maybe we get up to walk to the refrigerator, but we don't do a whole lot of cutting grass or uh, installing our own fences or wrestling cattle or growing gardens or hunting for food, or walking so many hours in order just to get water. We have conquered nature, and we have this very easy life. And with this easy life, we uh, do little to nothing, and our body is atrophying as a result. So what I do is I try to reaccess what people have lost starting with the six ranges of motion of the spine, which are anterior flexion, I can bow my spine forward, I can bow my spine back, my lateral flexion, and then of course, the rotation of the spine. From there, it works out to the hips, which everybody's hips are tight. Not only are our hips are tight, our back is weak because we slouch and we lean up against a, a chair or a couch all the time, and we, our muscle doesn't even know how to support good posture anymore. The hips are connected to the low back, and so their neighbors that are um, playing off of each other, and all this tightness and stiffness compounds, and then the hamstrings get shorter because we sit all the time, the calves, the same thing, the upper back gets tense, um, and it just goes out from the spine out. So I work from the spine out, reacting the range of motion first in the spine, the hips, ankles, shoulders, and wrist. In yoga, you, a yoga teacher will often say in the beginning of class to set your intention. Well, I think the average person going to a yoga class has no clue what that means. Um, and so what I do is I set the intention for the student. I want to get them back from the neglect of our body back to a state of good health. So that's my goal and my intention when I work with every single student. There are three shapes that I require all my yogis to aspire to get into. Number one is an activated forward fold. Number two is a deep squat. And number three is a traditional lotus pose with the legs sitting um, one stacked on top of the other. And this 
encourages the femoral rotation, which we lose. Most people today can't even sit Indian style on their own floor. We don't even sit on the floor in our own home. The way that my system applies to the students is everybody is triaged into one of three categories. You're either a beginner, which we often start with table stretches, where I can see what can your body do? And from, the mirror, from there, I make a determination on how I'm gonna move forward with this particular person. The second level would be a uh, restorative type class where we're doing yoga. Uh, not a lot of balance poses, um, not a lot of standing poses even. It's more uh, back and hips related, which happens most on the floor. This is a slower, longer hold yoga. Anybody can do it. Uh, it's not elegant. You don't have to put your leg behind your head uh, in order to start. It's, it, your progress begins exactly where you are. You don't have to say, well, once I do this or once I do that, then I'll start. No, you don't have to do that. You can start exactly the way you are. Then the next level would be the person who's either already doing yoga and can maybe get into shapes, but maybe they don't understand what is expected in those shapes, what's proper anatomical uh, use of the body to, in order to access those shapes. And then you have higher level yogis that not only have the same problem, but they have weakness. Maybe they're really limber, but they're not strong. So I work on both of those problems when it comes to the practitioner who's been doing it for a while or might even be advanced. The first session that I often offer to people who are curious about my type of work is just come. Uh, register on my website, come in, do a session, I'll do it for free. Account that you're gonna spend at least 60 to 90 minutes and during this conversation, I'll learn about you, I'll learn about your body, your needs, um, your limitations, and we'll make an approach from there. But the most important thing is to start. You can get nowhere if you don't start with some type of momentum. A body that's in motion will stay in motion. A body that's at rest, it will stay at rest. So starting that momentum is the key, that you have to take the initiative upon yourself as an individual, the responsibility that it's your body, and if you want something different for it, you need to make some type of effort. And through that, you'll end up working with the mind, you'll end up working with the breath, you'll end up working with the body, and uh, there's healing that takes place, not only in the body, in the mind, and in the other areas of your life. So I definitely encourage everybody, every single person, to practice some type of mindfulness. And, but you have to start. You have to start somewhere.